Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for coming here. Um, we have the obligatory forward-looking statement slide. Please make purchasing decisions based on uh, features that are available already and not anything that might come in the future. First off, I wanted to say thank you for coming to my session. I know there are a lot of sessions out there. It's lunchtime, and the fact that you're sitting here, I really do appreciate. So thank you so much. All right. So just to make sure you're in the right spot, we're going to be talking about managing Slack channels and members using Salesforce Flow. My name is Rich Engelhard. I am the CEO at Engelhard Consulting. We are a small consulting firm helping companies implement Salesforce and CPQ, CLM, everything on the Salesforce platform. One of the things that we work with is Slack. Um, so we'll actually be showing a demo of this uh, going through. I'm a big Slack fan. This is in our org, something we do with our projects. But we're going to be uh, talking about it with opportunities today. OK, so um, this is our agenda. What are we going to talk about? First, we're going to talk about Slack channels. And uh, we're going to take uh, a look at some of the stuff that's right from Trailhead. So if you've taken some trailheads on Slack channels, you're going to see maybe two slides that you might have seen before. If you haven't, highly recommend going out and look at it. It's a great trailhead. Then we're going to talk about a little problem, just a small, tiny little problem. We're going to talk, uh, we're going to show the demo because I think it's better to show the demo of how we handle certain things before we actually go into the solution, review the solution, and maybe get some Q&A in. All right. So, um, when we talk about Slack channels, right, we want to be able to set up Slack channels with certain consistency, right? We want to be able to, as you can see here, we kind of have, um, is this laser pointer working? Hey, we have uh, projects right here, P-O-R-J, right, in multiple places. We have E-X-T right here. So we want to make sure that as we set up our Slack channels, they're set up the same way so everyone knows what they are every single time. When I look at EXT, that means external. So I know that customers or partners or somebody else might be in this channel. And so I, as a user, know, OK, hey, i got to be careful about what I post here. So project, obviously, would be project for Waterworks. What project are we talking about? Is it the fundraiser? What part of it? Is it for legal, right? So Salesforce says, you want to set up your Slack channels this way. Awesome. This really makes sense. Um, they also have some other ideas for the sales team, right? This one says sales wins, right? So anytime you get like a closed one opportunity, maybe you want to post about it in sales wins, right? You want your channels to be properly named for your users so that they know what to go to in the channel, they know how to engage in that channel. So uh, the last thing that you also want to do is you want to be able to archive your channels. So after a channel has run its course, if you have a project, for instance, a project channel for a certain client. When that client's project is done, you want to archive it. This is really important. It doesn't allow for any new activity, but it keeps the history retained for easy browsing and searching. Uh, so as a result, um, you're, you're able to always see that information that happened in that project. You don't lose it. It's not deleted. Um, and every member gets a message from Slackbot when you archive a channel. So one of the big things that Salesforce says in this trailhead is, send one final message to your users about why you're closing the channel, right? You don't just want to archive it and not let them know. So far, everyone with me? We're good. Pretty straightforward. So what's the problem? Let me ask you this. How many of your users always enter data correctly 100% of the time without validation rules and automation? Not one person. So what's the issue? We're human, right? We always forget this stuff. We're moving quick. We can't expect our users to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at um, our demo. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit about what we're going to see, and I'm going to talk through the demo. It's pre-recorded. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to create a Slack channel for every opportunity. Now, this may be a real situation for you. It may not if you have a lot of business really quick turnarounds, you probably don't want an opportunity for every single, or a Slack channel for every opportunity. But if you have longer sales cycles where you're gathering a lot of people from multiple teams, you might. You might use this for projects, right? The reason why we're using opportunities is it's a standard object, so we wanted to go through that model. But internally, we actually use this for a custom project object that, that we did, and we set this up. 
We're also going to add the opportunity owner and, and the opportunity team members to the channel. So we want to automate this, right? If I get added to that opportunity team, I should be added to that channel automatically. I shouldn't have to have my users go in and search channels and figure that out. We're going to add a welcome message. We're going to pin that welcome message, and it's going to have a link directly to that record in Salesforce. Then we're going to send a channel archive message and archive the channel. All right, so I'm going to let this run and I will talk through it. So the first thing that you see here, oh, it's very grainy. Let me see if I can uh, set that a little bit higher. All right, here we go. We're gonna restart it. Whoop, lost the mouse. Okay. Oh, here we go. So the first thing that we have is uh, we're creating our new opportunity. Um, it's going to go through, and on the right-hand side, we're going to see a message here in a minute. When this opportunity gets created, I am going to create a channel for this opportunity that's going to be labeled correctly. So you can see I already have a message. This opportunity is created. And as you can see, op test account test op sept one. So terrible naming convention that I did for the opportunity, but that's what it's called, test op September 1. It's an opportunity for test account. So we're following our standard naming conventions. As a result, I added an opportunity team member, and now that opportunity team member automatically got added to that channel as well. Um, I'm going to update this opportunity to close one. It's actually going to now close the channel. And what you're going to be able to see here is it archived it. And we're also going to see our message from the archive. It says, this channel is being archived since the opportunity has been closed one. I'm going to pause it for just one second uh, in a different spot. One of the other things after I created it, um, I have that welcome message um, with a link to the opportunity. And as you can see, it says pinned by sales. So it is actually pinned up at the top. So it's really easy for people to be able to go to this opportunity link at any time. Now we did all of this with Salesforce Flow. So we're gonna take a look at how we actually do that. I'm gonna be talking a little fast, so I hope that's okay. But we have Slack actions in Flow, and this is really the magic. If you just type in Slack, you're gonna see all of these elements. Now, we've gotta set it up correctly in order for it to work. So, in, first thing you're gonna do is in setup, go type in Slack, and you're gonna see Slack for Salesforce. Here, you're gonna to agree to the terms, you're gonna kinda of go through uh, kind of a guided step-by-step -step that Salesforce has for you. So, it's gonna uh, teach you how to use permissions, it's going to go through and, and just kind of follow the prompts to make sure everyone is able to access this. One of the other cool things is you're going to decide on record detail security. So on the left-hand side, you can just see, hey, the amount was changed to blank because I don't have access to it. Or you can say, hey, we, we just want to be able to show everything. We're not really going to worry about it too much. We want to show some stuff that maybe they don't have access to, maybe they do, but we're going to put that in Slack so people know, right? So that's, a, that's kind of a cool little feature there. But after you set it up in Salesforce, then you're going to get the link to the Slack apps. So this is where you're actually going to go to Slack, and you're going to install. There's a couple apps. There's Salesforce for Slack, which if you do anything with approvals, approvals flow through in this. And then you have Sales Cloud for Slack, which is actually what we used for this off that opportunity object. After that, you're going to complete the uh, final setup. Again, you're going to kind of go through step by step. This is in setup in, uh, and when you type in Slack. Oops, press the wrong button there. All right. And then as a last little bonus, they have some really great features um, for Slack for Salesforce. So you can see we have getting started. We have sales channel, um, automated notification, feed channels. So a lot of this, they're going to kind of guide you on some of the things, setting up your page layouts, creating custom action buttons, doing things to be able to tie Slack to Salesforce together. So go take a look at it, a lot of great information. Now we're gonna actually jump into how we did this in Flow. So the first thing is we're gonna create a Slack channel. Um, on the right-hand side is the action. Um, as you can see, these are our inputs. So when you do the Slack app, the first thing you're gonna be able to see is you're gonna search here and it's gonna let you know what Slack apps you have available. In this case, we selected Sales Cloud for Slack. Then you're going to have your Slack workspace. As you can see, it's Engelhard Consulting. That's our Slack workspace that we use today. 
And third is, what do you want to execute the action as? The user or, in this case, the Slack app. So I didn't want it to look as user, I wanted to say sales went and added this, sales archived it. So it kind of depends on how you want your users to see that in the UI, if you want them to go, oh hey, Rich, I see you created this and added to me, why'd you do that? Versus like, oh, Slack, sales, you know, just did that. So that's what you're going to be able to set up. And then you're going to set this Slack channel name. Now, the Slack channel name is important. There are some kind of things that you have to realize. There are no special characters allowed, like commas, periods, ampersands, symbols. Everything has to be in lowercase. So when you go through the trailhead on it, um, there's a lot of specifications on telling you what it, what it can or can't be when you're just talking about Slack channels. Again, don't look for Slack integration, just go to that original Slack channel trailhead. Um, and it'll talk about it. I use the formula in Flow to be able to set that. So as you can see, Slack channel name is a formula. It's grabbing my opportunity name. It's starting with op. It's grabbing the account name, putting that all together. And then you have a channel type. Um, so this one says public. This is a public channel. Anybody can technically do it. Um, and the output is going to be the Slack channel ID. So um, in this case, I actually unchecked manually assigned variables. I, I have it assign it automatically, um, but I wanted to click that here in the screenshot so you can see the Slack channel ID. That is kind of like an, uh, an opportunity ID in Salesforce, right? So that's where you want to grab that information and you want to store that back on the opportunity record. Um, here's my formula. As you can see, I have a lower, so everything's going to go to lowercase. I'm substituting certain things so that way I don't have commas, spaces, right? I can't have a space in the Slack channel name. I'm replacing that with an underscore. So different things like that to make sure that you're able to actually save that Slack channel name. Um, and then as you can see, record Slack channel ID, that is my output. Okay, so we've created our channel. Now we're gonna check if users are connected. So one of the things that you'll have to think about is, oh, and it looks like my all my right side didn't work on that one. Sorry about that. Um, we have our input as a Slack app and a Slack workspace. Same thing as we talked about for before. Sales Cloud for Slack. Workspace was Angular Consulting. And then we have to have a Salesforce user ID collection resource. So what that is, if I click next, is it going to, nope. Um, what, what we're actually going to do is we're going to have to check all of those users. So we're, in this case, we're taking the opportunity owner and we're saying that that is going to be set, uh, you can see variable owner, we're setting that into a collection. We're sending that collection to Slack, and this is actually what Slack is giving us back. It's giving us back two things. Users connected to Slack, and users not connected to Slack. So Slack can use the, this does use the Salesforce uh, owner ID field, right? Takes the ID, then uh, it looks at it and say, says yes or no. In this case, we're only using a single user, so Theoretically, um, you know, it should be pretty straightforward, but we're going to loop in a minute with opportunity team member. Now we want to invite users to a Slack channel. So again, we have the Slack app, the workspace, execute action as, and then our Slack channel ID, right? We wanted to save that to that opportunity record so we know this is our Slack channel ID. We're going to have a Slack workspace ID um, as well, which is the Engelhard Consulting, and then the collection resource. So those Slack users that we just got back that we said, hey, do these users exist in Slack? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, great. Can we invite them to this channel? And I'm using that same output in Flow. Then I'm going to send a Slack message. Um, in here, we have a Slack conversation ID. They changed the name for this one piece. I don't know why, but it's the same as the channel, right? Slack channel ID, conversation ID. Um, but here we have a Slack message. And here, as you can see, we have a, uh, in this case, a, a formula for a Slack message. And uh, our record ID that we're tying it to is our opportunity ID. And so we're able to grab back a Slack message timestamp, which, as funny as a name is, as that sounds, is just like a ID for that message, right? So when we pin that message, we're actually going to use that ID as the part that we're going to pin. So here you go, here's my text template that I used with a formula, and this is just saying, hey, this is the channel for this uh, accounts opportunity, and I'm going to post a link to that record ID right here. This is going to take them right to the record when they click on it. So now we're going to pin or unpin. Um, in this case, we're going to pin, but it is an option. Um, right here, pin or unpin message. We want to pin it. 
we've used our Slack message timestamp, which I said is kind of an ID for that message that you wrote, um, and then we're saying what that Slack channel ID is. So what, what does it actually look like? How do we actually do it all? Uh, first, as I said, we're going to assign that owner to a collection because we need to make sure that, let's check if that owner exists. We create the channel, check if owner is in Slack, invite users to Slack channel, send the Slack message, pin the Slack message, and then update the opportunity ID with that Slack channel ID. You're probably going to want some decisions. Does this user exist? Yes or no? Other things like that, but to make it on a nice uh, slide and not too crazy, I just kind of kept the top level parts. Then we also did it with an opportunity team member, right? We said, hey, when this opportunity team member got added, we added them automatically to the Slack channel. Well, it's the same thing. We have a record triggered flow on opportunity team member. Then we're going to assign the opportunity team member to the collection, just like we did with the owner. We're going to check if they're in Slack, and then we're going to invite them to that Slack channel. Now we can archive a Slack message too, and as we said, that is a good best practice that you want to do. When this channel is done, in our case, opportunities won or lost, we're going to close it. And again, this one's really straightforward. All you have to do is send in the Slack channel ID, easy peasy. We now have a different flow here though. Uh, we already talked about the send message flow. So in this case, I am sending my message, best practice, let users know why you're archiving the channel, right? So we're letting them know why we're archiving the channel, and then we're archiving the channel. So again, this allows us to manage the best practice that Salesforce says um, from a channel perspective. We want to make sure we've named it correctly, we let users know why they got added, we're adding users automatically, we're sending them a message before we close it, or archive it, I should say, and then we're archiving it as well. So we're maintaining it and not letting so many thousands of channels sit out there forever. We're keeping uh, being good stewards of our Slack channels. So I do have a demo recap just to show everything one more time because now that we went through the solution, you'll see it. So it's the exact same demo we just went through and I'm gonna add the uh, better quality there, here we go. So again, uh, I'm creating my opportunity and as you can see automatically, I got a message, it's that instant, it's very, very quick. There's my message, it's been pinned already for me. Uh, it's got the link to the opportunity. I'm going through, I'm adding an opportunity team member. That team member is going to be added to that Slack channel automatically. As we can see, this was real time when I actually recorded my screen. So that is how fast it works. They get a notification, let them know that that's happening. Um, now we're gonna go close win this opportunity. And as a result, we're going to see here that we already have that message right after we closed won it that fast, it's been archived, and when we actually go to that channel, we're gonna see our archive message for being closed one. So this is being good, woo, good stewards of our Slack channels. <laughs> All right, sorry, I went too far out. All right. So, uh, now we just have a Q&A. If you guys do have any questions, I'll be around over here on the side, uh, love to chat. Thank you again for coming. I really do appreciate it. And uh, please, if you thought this was helpful, a survey would be awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We would love to get your opinion on this content, so please leave us some feedback on the comment section below. If you did like this content, give that like button a tap. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Salesforce Admins YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about being a Salesforce admin in general, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. Thanks again.